Now, the dynamic nature means when the charge is stored across a capacitor at any point of time, if this pass transistor, which is acting as a switch, is turned off, we have already seen in the previous clips that there are problems called as charge leakage due to different leakage currents which are present, which will tend to lose the value of this charge and eventually we might lose the correct value. So the dynamic name of this RAM is because it can hold its value, but when the switch turns off due to charge leakage, it might lose its value and hence we need to have a refresh mechanism in order to hold our correct value, which was not to be the case in SRAM because in SRAM, there were back-to-back -back inverters connected in a feedback loop, which will always ensure that our value is never lost. That's the reason it was static or it could hold to that value in dynamic RAM due to charge decay, the value is lost. So these are some of the basics which we need to understand with DRAM compared to SRAM. Moving ahead, let's understand the basic writing principle in DRAM. It's very simple because we know that it's nothing but a pass transistor or an excess transistor with this being called the word line. This is nothing but my bit line or my data line. And this is nothing but my capacitor which will save the charge or which will store the charge to be more precise. The writing operation is very, very simple. Make your word line high. When your word line is high, whatever data, let's call this as data line also, anything you can call. And this we will call it as C cell. This node will call it as X and voltage across this we will call it as V cell. So we know that when word line goes high, because it's a pass transistor, whatever is present on the data line will be passed to X. So suppose if my data line was one or VDD, my X would be one. If my data line would be zero and my word line is high, a zero would be written. So here you can write either a one on this capacitor or a zero. These are logic values. However, we know that an NMOS when used as a pass transistor cannot pass a perfect value one. It can pass a logic value one, but it cannot pass a perfect value one at the output or a perfect VDD at the output. The max it can pass is nothing but VDD minus VTN with a threshold voltage drop. This we have already seen in the pass transistor drawback. In order to ensure that it passes a perfect VDD, what we need to do is a very simple change. We just need to make our word line VDD plus VTP or VDD plus VTN because we are talking about NMOS. So what's going to happen is rather than making it VDD, see it was like this in pass transistor. If this was VDD and this is what is nothing but our gate terminal and this is source, we said that VGS should be greater than or equal to threshold voltage. So VG minus threshold voltage was equal to V source. So this was nothing but VS equal to VDD minus VT because my gate voltage was VDD. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my gate voltage only nothing but VDD plus VTN. So this is VS equal to VDD plus VTN minus VTN because it's an NMOS. So this will get canceled off and I'll get a perfect VDD at my node X or a perfect value high stored across my capacitor. This is how a ride operation takes place. Now a question might arise. If I've already written into this capacitor a value one, and after that my word line goes to zero, what will happen? So the circuit is the same. My word line has gone to zero. So the transistor is off. This is my bit line and this is my capacitor. We have already seen this in the previous clip that now because of the leakage currents, we have seen this a concept called as charge leakage. What's going to happen? And the leakage currents can be of different, different types right from ranging from PN junction diode, reverse leakage to leakage due to subthreshold conduction. We have seen that also or due to the material, etc. We have seen all this in the clip on chart leakage in C square MOS logic circuit. 